Good evening, and thanks for staying with us for the next hour. Happy Thanksgiving Eve. This is one of those days when no news is supposed to happen. But it turns out there is a lot of news today, including a lot of news to be thankful for. Uh, not least the ceasefire in the Middle East that broke out this afternoon, which we will be getting a live report on from Richard Engel in Gaza uh, in just a couple of minutes. But I'm also thankful tonight to be able to report that the election has finally concluded in Arizona, where it took them 14 days to count votes and announce the results this year. In the end, it turns out that all three competitive congressional races in that state went to the Democrats. But the competitive U.S. Senate race for Republican John Kyle's old seat, that seat stayed Republican. And yes, the county sheriff who did the whole taxpayer-funded stunt about having his cold case posse uncover the fraud of President Obama's birth certificate, that sheriff did get reelected, barely. Now, last time he won by a 13-point landslide. This time he won by much less than that, but he did get reelected. Um, and that public publicity-hungry Arizona sheriff is not the only Arizona Republican elected official who has recently been fixated on the president's birth certificate. The Arizona Secretary of State this year threatened to keep President Obama off the ballot in Arizona for this year's election because, you know, Kenya or whatever. Um, and because that is the record of Arizona's Secretary of State, the state's current top elections official, I think nobody had very high expectations for him in terms of how well he would do running elections in the state of Arizona. And indeed, the Arizona elections this year went horribly, and it took them 14 days to even come up with the result. But they do have a result. And, surprise, I am thankful to report that that same Arizona Republican Secretary of State, who was a birther and who threatened to screw up the whole national presidential election because of his flirtation with birtherism, and who supervised what appears to have been a pretty terribly botched election in his state, that guy, that Secretary of State in Arizona, has now responded to his botched election by saying that he is not proposing making the next election worse. And this is news because Republicans in Wisconsin and Ohio and Iowa since the election have proposed making voting and voter registration even more difficult the next time around than it was this time. But this guy, Ken Bennett, Arizona's Republican Secretary of State, the birther guy, today he did not do that. Instead, he is proposing just sort of normal technocratic reforms for Arizona that seemingly are not designed to make things worse. He's proposing voting centers where anybody in the county can go vote no matter where your specific precinct is. That's been used in lots of other places. It's even used in some parts of Arizona. It is no panacea, but it is not the pursuit of further voter suppression from a Republican elections official. And for that, I imagine Arizona voters who stood in these long, long lines this year and then had to wait 14 days for a result. For that, I imagine Arizona voters are thankful, as am I. As somebody who wants our voting process to be where the two parties compete and not how they compete, I am thankful for that news today. And while we are on the subject of being thankful, I will also say that I am thankful for this guy, former Utah Governor John Huntsman. Yesterday, President Obama's campaign manager, Jim Messina, did an event for Politico.com in which he explained that the Obama campaign was very relieved that the Republican Party did not pick John Huntsman as their nominee to run against President Obama this year. I mean, obviously, Governor Huntsman did run for president this year for about five minutes, but he got out quickly and cleanly once it became clear that the Republican Party this year was not going to pick a guy who tweeted things like this. To be clear, I believe in evolution and trust scientists on global warming. Call me crazy. Yeah, that was not going to work for the Republican Party this year. And so John Huntsman got out early. And while the Obama campaign must have been relieved when he exited the race, the fact that he exited the race completely without having to go through the worst of the nonsense from the Republican primary and the fact that he got out in a way that largely kept him from being associated with the ultimately losing and now politically toxic Mitt Romney campaign, all of that means that John Huntsman is alive and well in American politics. John Huntsman is available to be a potential leader in the future Republican Party. And whether or not you like the Republican Party, Frankly, that party having somebody available for a leadership role who has been a successful governor and a successful ambassador to China, who has a constructive, mutually respectful relationship with President Obama, who was willing to put country first enough to work for President Obama, even though he is a Republican, a guy who believes in science and isn't embarrassed about it, to have that guy survive in Republican politics this year in 2012 while Mitt Romney disappears forever? I mean, hearing Jim Messina admit now 
how highly President Obama thinks of John Huntsman and how much he was worried about him as an opponent is a reminder to be thankful for John Huntsman and, frankly, hopeful that he keeps his hat in the ring in his own party. I'm thankful today, too, that the first post-election direct mail thingy that I got from Rick Santorum, remember him, was a political overture wrapped around the idea of buying made-in-the-USA Christmas presents. Yeah, Rick Santorum. It wasn't about evil Obamacare or how horrible it is that gay people want to get married or some imagined war on religion or any of the other Rick Santorum shtick we all got to know so well this past year and a half. It was instead about buying made-in-the-USA stuff. Okay, let's start there. Let's talk. I am thankful today to report that the Republican governor of Iowa, Terry Branstad, is suggesting that the Iowa Republican Party should get rid of its straw poll. He's not suggesting getting rid of the Iowa caucuses, just the straw poll, which is not a real poll or a real election of any kind. It's just a Republican Party fundraiser where Republican candidates bribe people and bus in people from all over the state for a big fake contest that the national media habitually treats as if it is a real thing, even though it is nonsense, which you can tell by the fact that Michelle Bachman was the winner of it this year before her campaign promptly imploded. The Iowa straw poll means nothing. It is a hoax that the Republican Party of Iowa perpetrates on the country and the candidates every year. And the media goes along with it every year, even though we all know that's true. But now the Republican governor of that state says it is ridiculous. Let's get rid of it. That would be a blow against cynicism. That would be a blow for political rationality. And I am thankful for that news. Not all symbolic political events are pointless, though. And in today's news, I am also thankful that there is a somewhat bizarre political tradition in this country at Thanksgiving time of the president of the United States pardoning a turkey or two so they get to live and not die even as the country prepares to cook and eat the carcasses of millions of birds of their same species. In our American culture, it is very rare that we celebrate mercy, right? That we model mercy as laudatory behavior by a strong leader. And so I am thankful every year that we go through this mercy pageant where the president issues a formal pardon to those big, awkward birds. This year in particular, I am thankful that the birds were named Cobbler and Gobbler. Cobbler and Gobbler, watch. You know, they say that life is all about second chances. And this November, I could not agree more. So in the spirit of the season, I have one more gift to give, and it goes to a pair of turkeys named Cobbler and Gobbler. The American people have spoken, and these birds are moving forward. <laughs> Love this bird. Now, I joke, but, but for the first time in our history, the winners of the White House turkey pardon were chosen through a highly competitive online vote. And once again, Nate Silver completely nailed it. <laughs> the guy's amazing. He predicted these guys would win. I am thankful that the president made a Nate Silver joke when he pardoned the Thanksgiving turkeys Cobbler and Gobbler this year. I'm thankful that Nate Silver's professional success this election season has at least temporarily put a halt to the nonsense questioning of whether polling is real, of whether numbers can be trusted to be true, even when you do not like what the numbers indicate. If you are thankful that Barack Obama was reelected as president, I have to say you are probably not thankful that John Boehner was reelected as Speaker of the House. And vice versa. If you're psyched about John Boehner, you're probably not psyched about President Obama. But there is one thing about the reelection of both of these men that I think is maybe worth being thankful for. I am thankful that John Boehner forever and President Obama, maybe only recently, um, these two men have been willing to show emotion in public, to be big, tough American leaders of the highest order, right? Both of them in positions where they really answer to no one but the voters, and they are willing to be seen shedding a tear without shame. I am thankful for that in our national American leadership. I am thankful that the brilliant BBC series House of Cards about the most evil politician ever, a series, mini series that I've watched a million times and I've been addicted to for years, I am happy, I am thankful, I am thankful that House of Cards is being remade by Kevin Spacey and it comes out in February. 
I am thankful for NBC White House producer Shauna Thomas, who sent us this picture of the lines for early voting in Houston this year. And we posted that online, and that led to our viewers from all over the country sending us pictures of long lines when you guys went to vote early, which helped us bring national coverage to the issue of just how long people were waiting in line to vote even before the long lines on Election Day itself. We could not have covered that story without you guys sending us data for us to follow up on. And I am very thankful that you watching this show consistently send stuff into our blog that helps us cover the news in a way we could not do otherwise. I am thankful for that. And while we're on the subject, honestly, I'm thankful for everybody who had the stamina and resolve to stand in those long lines to vote this year. I'm thankful for everyone who volunteered in the election effort on any side, whose job it was to talk people into voting and to help people stick it out, despite how hard they made it in some places this year to actually get your vote cast. I'm thankful that regardless of the two candidates in this case and, and their two parties, in one state this year, it proved untenable to win a seat in the United States Senate by mocking and attacking your opponent for being part Native American. Particularly on this holiday, I am thankful that in 2012, running an overtly race-based campaign could take an incumbent who everybody thought would probably win and hold on to his seat, could take that incumbent and instead have him lose his seat by eight points. After that campaign, regardless of who he is, I am thankful that that campaign was a failure. I am thankful that the satire site, The Onion, ran this headline in the middle of the Petraeus affair scandal. Right? Nation horrified to learn about war in Afghanistan while reading up on Petraeus sex scandal. Yes, yes, The Onion gets it right again. Sometimes satire gets it better than outrage and explanation ever could, and this goes in the pantheon of perfect Onion headlines. I am thankful for foreign correspondents and for news organizations who pay them and pay their expenses, which are considerable, and who give them the freedom to explain exactly what it is that they are seeing out there in the big dangerous world. I am thankful that we are at a time in American media where we have foreign correspondents who are not only daring and capable, but who are critical and independent and uncowed by anyone. I am very thankful for that. I'm thankful specifically for ABC's Martha Raddatz, who was the first foreign correspondent to ever cross over into the role of solo debate moderator in the presidential season. She was the solo vice presidential debate moderator this year, and she ran a freaking excellent debate. And while we are on the subject of people on other networks for whom I am thankful, I am specifically thankful for Mark Knoller at CBS who I've never met, but whose Twitter stream is an always-on, constant stream of short declarative factual statements explaining very basic details of the president's movements and all sorts of other political things that all of us end up needing detail on. Why isn't there going to be a second refueling when the president is coming back from Asia? Mark Knoller's on it. Tailwinds from Japan. What was in the bags of food handed out at the White House charity event? Mark Knoller's on it, and it includes yams. I'm thankful that in just a few weeks, the great city of Chicago is going to be organizing a welcome home parade to mark the end of the Iraq war, a parade on December 15th to thank Americans who have fought in Iraq and who have fought in Afghanistan. I am thankful for the Iraq and Afghanistan veterans who themselves decided to self-start veterans cleanup and recovery crews for the coast in New York and New Jersey when Hurricane Sandy hit. I'm thankful that there is still an American automobile industry when it was not at all clear just a few years ago that that would be true. I'm thankful that the American automobile industry not only exists, but it is kicking butt. I am thankful for that. I'm thankful that when my pal Jenny Jardin at boingboing.net got diagnosed with breast cancer this year, Jenny decided to go public with it in a way that has led millions of people to look at the issue of cancer differently and more critically in a way that is uncompromisingly unpatronizing and very smart, like everything she does. I am thankful for Jenny. For Jenny. I'm thankful for the reporter named Terry Camp at the local ABC affiliate in Flint, Michigan. He's the reporter who got vice presidential nominee Paul Ryan to admit that contrary to what the NRA was saying in multi-million dollar ad buys around the country, actually President Obama wasn't changing gun laws to take anyone's guns away. And then Paul Ryan pulled off his microphone and his handler put that piece of paper up in front of the camera. And then Paul Ryan never did another local news interview until he lost the election and the campaign was over. I'm thankful for local news reporters who work generally in lousy conditions with lousy support for lousy pay and who do things as wide-rangingly wonderful as KTLA covering the story of the Glendale bear wandering the streets of Los Angeles. 
to CBS Atlanta building this wacky graphic to accompany the story of the Georgia Republican state senators holding a seminar on President Obama's mind control techniques. To the political reporter for the ABC affiliate in Miami who had the big pitcher of water thrown all over him when he was bravely trying to report on the story of the scandal-ridden now former congressman David Rivera. I'm thankful specifically for James Carter, who brought the infamous 47% video from Mitt Romney to light with help from David Korn at Mother Jones Magazine. And that video, of course, ended up being a bigger deal even than how distracted everybody got by the fact that James Carter is the grandson of former President James Carter. I'm thankful for reported local politics blogs, some of which are partisan and some of which aren't. Sites like Eclecta Blog in Michigan and Plunderbund and uh, Ohio Capital Blog in Ohio for reporting out and documenting local political stories in a way that we really need nationally, but we sometimes can no longer get from the local more official press since the business model has cost so many reporters their jobs. I'm thankful for the Jackson Free Press, specifically, staying on the Mississippi voter ID story when those of us up here in New York were having a heck of a time trying to follow the twists and turns of that Mississippi voter ID story any other way, and we couldn't have done it without them. I'm thankful to the Miami Herald for keeping this great reporter, Carol Rosenberg, on the Guantanamo beat, even when the country has largely turned away from that story. Carol Rosenberg's reporting is definitive and relentless, and it is a service to the country that the Miami Herald has kept her on that beat. I'm thankful to the Republicans and the conservatives who will brave the people on their own side who tell them not to do it and who will nevertheless come talk to liberal hosts like me and the other liberal hosts like me here on MSNBC. And yes, that means Steve Schmidt and Michael Steele and Meghan McCain, who we've been able to bring on board officially here at this network, but also everybody else on the right who is willing to come on just as a guest because you are not afraid to leave the echo chamber. I will not say your name here for fear it will get all your Christmas party invitations rescinded from your friends on the right, but you know who you are. And I thank you. And I hope there are more of you next year. I'm thankful for C-SPAN. I'm thankful for the election that we just went through, and I'm thankful that it is over and that it really, really, I swear, really is too soon to start talking about 2016. For a long time, it will be too soon to talk about 2016. I am thankful for that and for the fact that through this flawed and contested but ultimately noble system of regular elections and representative democracy, what we have in this country are peaceful transitions of power. I am thankful for all of that. And you know what? I am thankful for the fact that the highest profile person in our entire country, other than our president, is our nation's top diplomat. With tonight's ceasefire in the Middle East, I am very, very thankful for diplomacy. American diplomacy and just diplomacy. We have more on that just ahead, live from the Middle East. There is a lot to be thankful for this Thanksgiving Eve, including the fact that ours is a country that makes a holiday out of thankfulness. There's a lot ahead tonight. Stay with us.